I was ready to deal with them. And then you see them, you say, wow, that's the devil. Pro Boxy fans, we are here in Riyadh with me, my good old friend Teddy Atlas. Um, Teddy, first of all, how are you? How was the trip? I know you do long hours getting here. How's things? Listen, if I was trying to be a comedian right now, which I would not be good at, thank God I know a little something about boxing, hopefully, after 50 years, but I would make a joke and say my arms are tired from flying. Uh, <laughs> but I am tired. My arms aren't, but... I'm a little bit, there is something to that jet lag mystery, I guess, but uh, like anything, like in my business, what do I always say to you guys? 75% of it's mental in boxing, <laughs> so no different from the people that, like me that have been in boxing and training and the other side of it. The, the mental side is always the most important. You have to learn to be able to... Uh, governor, you know, over across the pond, they would say, be the governor. You have to be the governor over such things. You have to be able to push those things aside. But, yeah, it was like an 18-hour trip to get here uh, between a direct flying and then a layover and then, you know, connecting and everything else, going to the airports and stuff. So we hadn't slept for a good good amount of time. It was nice to get a, it was nice to get a good night's sleep. It was nice for you to be so good yesterday to say no Teddy let's do it tomorrow so actually you might be able to know what the hell you're talking about <laughs> because uh, you could use a little rest um, Ted, what, what, what actually is your jet lag remedy what's the best thing for jet lag stay up uh, to, uh, in all kidding aside drink plenty of <laughs> fluids I'm Dr. Atlas over here drink plenty of fluids plenty of water but all kidding aside, when you get to your destination, stay awake. Stay awake into nighttime, and then you get, you know, you get on track. <laughs> you get a good night's sleep. You know, you don't need to be sleeping for 12 hours. You know, you get a good night's sleep, uh, and and you you're back on track. And uh, try not to be taking naps during the day because if you take naps during the day, but if you're busy doing stuff, you don't have time for naps. So that's even better. But if you're taking naps during the day. Uh, again, you, when nighttime comes along, you ain't going to be doing what you want to be doing. You're not going to be sleeping. You're, you're going to be, you know, tossing and turning, and then you're going to be in the same position. You're going to be tired for the next day. You've got a lot of experience of that, so you do know what you're talking about. Let's talk about... One time we went to Germany to fight Axel Schultz for the heavyweight title. <laughs> I had Michael Mora. So I wanted to get there two weeks... I want to get there two weeks ahead of time to acclimate properly. And this was, you know, this was after we lost the title to Foreman. We were fighting for the title again, very important. Uh, we have to win that heavyweight title back. So we get there two weeks ahead of time. And Michael was like my son in some ways, you know. Uh, and sons can be, as Howard Cosell said to Muhammad Ali, they can be truculent, right? Truculent. And uh, so we get there and I said, Michael, you got to stay up. And he's tired. And I'm tired. We're all tired. But he's tired. And I, and I go in his room because I knew what he was going to be doing. He was going to be looking to go to... I said, no, no, you got to stay up because... And you know how when you have a little kid, you have children. They say, no, stop. I want to go to bed. You know, or leave me alone. He, he literally was... It was like that. He goes, no, I, I just want to sleep. I, <laughs> and I felt like I was with my... You know, I felt like I was with my little four-year-old, you know? I said, no, but no... Yeah, yeah. The only difference was with my four-year-old, I actually would let him sleep. Yeah, sure. But, but I. So it was. I said, no, no. But you can't sleep. You can't sleep. You got to stay up. You know, and uh, it was, it was difficult. But uh, the, again, there was a purpose. It wasn't being me mean, trying to keep him sleep deprived. And I guess the whole moral to the story is, if anyone out there thinks. Being a trainer is only X's and O's, that it's not being a parent, too, or it's not being a psychologist, too. They don't know what this business of training really is about, because it's about more than just X's and O's, more, about, more than just straight punches versus wide punches, more than just footwork. It's, it's about this. It's about the mindset of somebody, and, of course, also dealing with the personality of fighters. And... Uh, Talking about personality, let's start talking. 
Let's talk about the big one, this fight, um, Dmitry Bivol and Orta Bertsbiev, um, a fight that we've been wanting for a long, long time as boxing fans. And it seems like only Turkey LA Sheikh and Ria season could make it happen. Um, but talk to me about this one. I do want your your headspace, because you were in the opposite corner when obviously Otto to be a four, uh, Alexander yeah. Wozdik. Um, what did you see we on- We were winning that fight. We were winning that fight going to the 10th round. <laughs> uh, what did I see in that fight? I saw what we knew we were gonna have. It falls on my responsibility that we lost it. We were winning going into the 10th round. We were ahead on, on two of the three scorecards. But we got broken down because you know there's no 10 round title fights. <laughs> they're 12 rounds, and they're 12 rounds for a reason. <laughs> because those last few rounds used to be 15, <laughs> but those last few rounds, the championship rounds, as they refer to it, <laughs> you test a person in other quarters, physical quarters, but mental quarters, too. And um, better be it makes a living of testing people in those quarters. He may, it's not just about the jab, it's not just about the body shots and, and the straight right hand that he's so terrific at and the power and the, everything else, but it's about the pressure he puts on people. It's about the, the constant wearing of a person that it, it takes more than, you know, three, four, five, six rounds for that to be applied. It's like applying a medicine, and you want results right away. Uh, you are no ointment to a, to an area that is sore, and you want results. But no, it takes hours. It takes maybe days to get the results. Well, better be of style. <laughs> his approach, his way of attacking somebody, it takes time. It takes rounds, uh, and it shows up. He evaporates people. He, 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 his, part of his thing, it's not just a jab, it's, he's much better than he gets credit for, uh, from a technical standpoint. They do a good job of him. You know, he's, he's covered up, he's technically solid. He's all those things. He, he, he's not just a sick and destroy guy. If you think he's only that, you're making a mistake. He, he's not just a walking guy that takes three to land one. He's, he's far more than that. He's a guy who is buttoned up. In areas that a great fighter should be buttoned up, technically. Uh, he does take a walk around the block every once in a while instead of coming straight in. He does give you a little faint. He does do these subtle things uh, that, that allow his power to be delivered, uh, allow him to, you know, to be able to <laughs> dress down a better boxer, to be able to deal with a better boxer or a boxer who does have maybe superior speed or superior footwork in certain ways. He does step out of range just enough without it looking like he's doing a lot, where Bevo, who's tremendous and special, you can notice it more. Would better be if you don't notice it as much because it's subtle. It's just enough to make you mess, just enough to give him a reprieve, and then he's back. <laughs> he's back in range. <laughs> he's back in range again. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the thing that makes it all work for him, makes it all possible, is this. His mental toughness, the, the will, the, the, the steadiness mentally that, that, he, that no matter what's happening, whether he's cut, whether he's been hurt, no matter what it is, that, that he, he is, he's not going to miss a beat. He's not going to get discouraged. You know, it, it's going to continue. The, 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 it's going to continue coming. It's going to continue. The, the pounding at the door ain't going away. It ain't going away. It goes away when the door's knocked down, but it ain't going away just because it's going away. He, he is the, that direct sunlight that I've talked about when I used to do all the commentating for ESPN and now on my podcast. He is that direct sunlight in the middle of July, in the middle of a hot summer, that is beating on that little puddle of water in the street and you go away from that puddle for a half hour, you come back and the puddle ain't there. Where is it? It's up in the sky. It got evaporated. Where's the man? He, he's gone. He's on the floor. He got evaporated. Again, it's, it's that part. And we prepared. My job with 
Vozik was to prepare him <laughs> to deal with that. <laughs> the reality of <laughs> the reality of that, the reality, the the consistency of that, the persistence of that, and also from a technical standpoint, to deal with keeping him off balance, knowing that that he's going to look to close the gap, knowing that he's going to look to get to your body, that he's going to look to own you on the inside. Keep him off balance. Give him angles. You know, don't just run on him. If you just run on him, he's going to, he's just going to come in and he's eventually going to get to you. You know, he's, he, he's got nothing to slow him down. He's got nothing to make him respect you. He's got nothing to deal with. You have to punch, then move. You can't move first because they're close to the gap. You never get a chance to punch with him. You got to punch first. You got to punch before you move. Hold him and then change the distance, but don't run. Change the distance where you're still set to punch again because you're still going to have to have something to repel him. More than just defense, more than just legs. You're going to have to be able to have a proper a proper mix of offense and defense. You're going to have to have that where, yeah, you step out on him, but then you got to be ready to punch again. Yeah, you move to the side. You better be ready to punch again because he'll move with you. And we did that. I have to say, we did that. We did it for ten rounds. We were winning that fight. We were we were showing the blueprint of how to beat him. We didn't get to the finish line, which nobody has yet. And the reason we had didn't was my fault. Because at the end of the day, I would get credit if we had won. I got credit, some credit, when we beat Adonis Stevenson for the for the light heavyweight title with him. So I deserve some of the opposite when my guy loses. We weren't quite mentally and physically what we had to be in the mental endurance area at the end. We got broken down. We got physically and mentally broken down at the end. And again, I have to take responsibility. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't believe we would. I believe we were up for the, for the measure of this man. But believing it and doing it in the gym is one thing. And then, like I always say, when the devil knocks at the door and you see the devil, then you say, I was ready for the devil, I was ready to deal with him. And then you see him, you say, wow, that's the devil. Um, you know, and, and then you find out if you're ready. At the end of the day, there is a blueprint how to beat, uh, definitely how to beat better be of and the blueprint I think is what Bevo has uh, to be able to control range to be able to put punches together at the proper distance before he closes the gap <laughs> to be able to give angles <laughs> to be able to be responsible defensively uh, but at the end of the day that won't get him to the finish line either but I believe Bevo will get to the finish line and I know that I'm saving your questions right now because I'm giving you the answer to the question ultimately you want. Who's going to win the fight and why? I think the reason why this guy will be different than other guys who have been able to show the ability to outbox better be for a certain amount of time if you will. Um, the difference is I believe Bevo can match him mentally. I believe that. I don't know, no one else has talked about it, but I believe, I could be wrong, we'll find out in a couple of days, <laughs> but I believe that Bevo has the wherewithal, mentally, the, the part of the world he came from, his upbringing, just like I believe that it's part of what is responsible for better be of being that man, that special man, that, that hard man, that, 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 that gladiator, samurai type man is because of the region of the world he comes from, the way he's brought up, the way he's trained, the code, the code of a warrior's behavior, a warrior's mentality, a warrior's responsibility of behavior when the moment comes. I believe that Bevo has some of that. I believe he comes from a region where he has, he has lived with that and he has been developed with that. I believe when push comes to shove, you will see that he will continue using the physical tools that he has that other people have had to be able to give better be a tough fight, but he'll be able again to finish the job because I, I don't think he'll be broken down mentally. I, I believe that the, what you see in better be if, which is very visible, that, 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 uh, <laughs> that just that, that, 
that ability, if you want to call it ability, but that that talent of that mental force, that that mental force that I'm not going to be broken. I will break you. I will not be conquered. I will conquer you. I believe that you don't see it as visible as as easily in Bevo because he's a different he's of a different texture he's of a different you know style where the way he does things you don't attach that kind of mentality to that style you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong he i believe he has that mentality and at the end of the day if i'm right he'll win the fight because of that yeah, but we would say, oh yeah, you know, he he did this and he jabbed and he and he and he slid to the side and he, you know, he set traps. Yeah, all of that. But he will be able to execute it under those harsh, harsh that harsh environment because of this, because I believe he really does possess that kind of mental toughness um, that can at least come close to matching what better be if has. And also, there's X factors, there's intangibles. People is close to, better be if is close to 40. You don't know when that guy caught Father Time and he's undefeated. You just don't know when he sh shows up. I talked about the devil knocking at the door. You don't know when that guy knocks at the door, you know, with that long beard and, and, and says it's your time. You just don't know. I'm not saying it's going to be Saturday night, but you don't know. And also, I think another possible factor is this, skin. I think that he's been cut enough, better be if, where there's enough scar tissue, where his skin now is, is brittle in certain areas, where with the kind of style, the kind of punches, the slashing, snapping kind of punches that people obviously delivers or is capable of delivering, it could bust them up. It could. Listen, at the end of the day, it's an interesting, interesting fight for all these reasons, and it does come down to, as I've said many times, and I said about the uh, the Joshua Dubois fight, will versus skill. Yeah, I know Dubois had skill too, obviously, and he could punch like hell, but it really did come down to his new developed and found will. <laughs> against the skill that we knew that Joshua had. And the will usually does beat skill. Unless the other person's skill is so far superior that the will never gets tested. But, but if it's close, and obviously at this level, everything is comparable when it comes to talent, except for the power, better be if has the edge there, but everything else is very comparable, it will come down to will. And at the end of the day, I think that's the best way to say that, that you look at this fight, will versus skill. So it's the will better be of versus the skill of, uh, the skill of Bevo. But when it's all over and all said and done, I'm betting on, when I handicap it, that we would have not understood that the other guy had the will also. So when it's will versus skill, in this case, it's will versus skill of Bevo, but Bevo is in possession of the same level of will as the man that he's going up against. And again, that will, for me, that will be the deciding factor. <laughs>